The Iron Curtain, it seemed to me, was a false and ugly divide within the family of European nations. So I was hugely satisfied by the accession of 10 new member countries to the European Union in 2004 and delighted by the addition of Bulgaria and Romania three years later. But European integration is not simply something that occurs at the moment that a new member state joins. Integration is an ongoing and complex process. We were and we still are in business Europe uh, in favor of the single market in all its components. And the free movement of people is not yet complete and should be. One of the most important key questions, how do we enlarge not the European Union but the Eurozone? and on which conditions. And I think it's right to at least ask ourselves the question and to look at if all the conditions that we set in the Maastricht Treaty has, can be fulfilled in the current uh, circumstances. Protectionism is not a remedy, but it is the part of the problem. It's a very severe and serious part of, the, part of the problem. We need free trade and we don't need new barriers. Solidarity is not a charity. Solidarity is the wise, selfish interest of all stakeholders. The, the real content of the solidarity to understand, emphatically understand the problems of the others and to, to find out the way how can we commonly resolved for, for all benefit. Strong euro in long-term perspective could remain strong only if it is supported by other common policies uh, in, of, the, of the Union. Uh, and I cannot imagine stronger euro uh, without uh, more uh, coordination of economic policy and with more common foreign security and defense policy. I think that this is also one of the main preconditions uh, for the European Union to become a stronger global player. Of course, we have a headache now, Lisbon Treaty. I hope that this headache will uh, go out and we should keep our doors open because Balkan states are also states which have to have a hope to be in the European Union when they will fulfill criteria. We, so-called uh, 10 countries coming from former socialist regime, we know that we have still a lot of work to do in our countries. Actually, this financial crisis just show us Again, that we have a lot to do in structural reforms. In European democracy, the role of the citizen has really moved stage centre. And there are two main uh, planks in this, two main dimensions. The first is that we need to um, enhance transparency in terms of social supervision of what's going on, decentralisation and making sure that information gets out. That's one thing. But secondly, there has to be an opening up uh, to the citizens so that they are able to uh, take part in a participative uh, democracy um, in what is a knowledge and communication-based society. This historic enlargement is a true success story because all the fears that the old member states had about the problems that we the new member states might cause in the single market, they were proved untrue. There was no, there has been no social dumping, there has been no immigration dumping. There were many who worried that uh, decision making will become ineffective with 27 member states, but history has proved them wrong. If you look at democracy in the broadest sense, um, I think everyone has now realized that this is an active informing principle in society. And uh, this is real uh, progress, considering the generations uh, which went be before and the, the ruins on which we st were building. I think that there has been, if you like, a new start, a cesura, which has taken uh, place in the institutions, in the legal system which now applies. 
and clearly we were building on all the work which had gone before. And I think that there was an appetite for change. I think there was um, an acceptance on the part of the uh, citizenry of the, the new member states. There was a desire to build a better, basically a better civil society. The EU is still considered a sort of a universal remedy for whatever may happen in a country. We are now going through an economic crisis, yes, and it's and financial, and it's deep, and it's going to be probably, through the consequences, even worse. My own expectation is that we come out stronger out of this crisis, and uh, enlargement will go hand in hand with deepening, because we need this kind of structural uh, changes in, in our institutions and in the work of the, of the institution. And more important than everything, I think that the sense of solidarity that the European Union has built on will continue to exist. I must say that uh, the citizens of Slovakia today really consider European Union as uh, the most uh, trustworthy organization, even uh, more trustworthy than the national parliament. I am really proud that Slovakia meets all its obligations. However, I still have the feeling that the old 15 is still sort of not ready to accept that we are full and equal members or equal partners. Enlargement has served uh, as an anchor of uh, stability and peace uh, and uh, driver of uh, liberty and democracy in Europe. It has uh, extended uh, the area of uh, peace and prosperity to almost uh, 500 uh, million people. And it has increased uh, our weight uh, in the world. Uh, we cannot afford to be complacent about uh, the progress uh, achieved uh, to date. Uh, and that's why it is crucial, it is essential, that our policy of uh, stabilization through enlargement uh, is uh, and must be kept on track, uh, even if it is uh, no high-speed train. If you want to deal with um, uh, the USA, uh, with Russia, with China, uh, then you had better also be big. Uh, but you had better also be united. Um, the way in which we conduct business has to be different. Doing business at 27 in the Council is different from doing business at 15. You also need some different organization. At 27, you need, you need a bit more leadership from the center. You need a strong commission uh, in foreign affairs. The high representative, the secretariat, plays an important role. You need a strong presidency. Five years are not sufficient to create a new alloy. We are still in a melting pot between the former members and the new members. Uh, and then, you know, the crisis has hit us. Even without the crisis, my question would have been, are the member countries ready, ready to um, go beyond the EU as a multiplier of national power to a substitute for it? The enlargement, uh, we could have expected problems in any area uh, where we have uh, um, at the need of unanimous decisions, uh, enlarging the the number of countries and respectively people who take decisions from 15 to 25, now 27. Uh, and I think that one of the main uh, results, I guess, uh, of this enlargement uh, was the push uh, to reform the for common foreign and security policy, first with the constitutional treaty, which failed, now with the Lisbon Treaty. I hope Lisbon Treaty is uh, uh, will succeed uh, finally this year. What we brought to the European Union debate and European Union practice is, I would say, much greater awareness on human rights. After all, the whole history of our quest for democracy was marked by human rights issue. And this is why we are also less concerned about some real politic uh, and more attached to, uh, to, to, to human rights values, which is, I think, important for the identity of, uh, of Europe and for what European Union is about.